everyone, it's Roha Wanderer and welcome back to my channel. Kung first time mo sa channel kong ito, maaari mong isubscribe at i-click ang notification bell para ma-notify ka sa mga next videos ko. Ang programang inyong mapapanood ay batay po lamang sa aking pananaliksik. Ito ay hindi nagsusulong ng karahasan at anumang ikasisira ng komunidad. Maiging makinig, unawain, intindihin at panuorin ang buong video. Kennedy Space Center, SpaceX and NASA are once again gearing up to try to make history by launching two astronauts into Earth's orbit. NASA and space fans were disappointed Wednesday when the first attempt was called off due to weather. They have waited nearly a decade for this milestone, which will usher in the return of human space flight to U.S. soil. It's hurricane season in Central Florida, and that means launch officials are dealing with weather conditions that are often severe and extremely fickle. After enduring several thunderstorms and a tornado warning on Wednesday, the sky began to clear up right around lit of time, but ultimately, ominous clouds and the risk of lightning was too high to allow the launch to proceed. One other issue Central Florida is facing, controlling crowd amid COVID-19 pandemic. Florida beaches opened earlier this month, and during SpaceX's first launch attempt on Wednesday, local news outlets reported that spectators crowd public viewing sites, even as a series of thunderstorms rolled through the area. The Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, which did not sell any tickets for Wednesday's launch, officially reopened on Thursday. This will mark the first time in history that a commercial aerospace company has carried humans into Earth's orbit. NASA and space fans have waited nearly a decade for this milestone. The United States hasn't launched its own astronauts into space since the Space Shuttle program ended in 2011. Since then, NASA's astronauts have had to travel to Russia and train on the country's Zoyuz spacecraft. Those seats have cost NASA as much as $86 million each. But a space agency chose not to create its own replacement for the shuttle. Instead, it asked the private sector to develop a spacecraft capable of safely ferrying astronauts to and from the International Space Station. A controversial decision considering that NASA had never before outsourced the development of a human-rated spacecraft. The thinking was that commercial companies could drive down costs and spur innovation and NASA would have more time and resources to focus on exploring deeper into the solar system. Two veteran astronauts, Robert Benken, 49, and Douglas Hurley, 53, they worked for NASA, but they've worked closely with SpaceX and have been trained to fly the Crew Dragon capsule, which will become only the fifth spacecraft design after the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and Space Shuttle vehicles that NASA has certified as safe enough for humans. Benken and Hurley both began their careers as military test pilots and have logged hundreds of hours piloting supersonic jets. They also both flew in previous space shuttle missions when NASA selected them for this mission in 2018. It continued a long lineage of military test pilots who were deemed to have the right staff for groundbreaking moments in human space flight history. NASA wants to keep Benken and Hurley on the space station until another Crew Dragon capsule is ready to send more people on its next mission. The astronauts told reporters last week that they're expecting to spend 1 to 3 months in space. The maximum length is 110 days according to NASA. When Benken and Hurley return home, they'll board Crew Dragon, journey back to the atmosphere, while the vehicle deploys parachutes and then land in the Atlantic Ocean. The International Space Station has orbited Earth for two decades. The United States and Russia are the station's primary operators, but 240 astronauts from 19 countries have visited over the years. Rotating crews of astronauts have staffed the ISS continuously since year 2000, allowing thousands of scientific experiments to be carried out in microgravity. Research has included everything from how the human body responds to being in space to developing new medications. Typically, about six people stay on the International Space Station, but right now, there are only three. NASA's Christopher Cassidy and Russia's Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner. Please like this video and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell to be updated for my latest videos.